Hey everyone, I'm Danny, and welcome to Muggle Magic. A few very short days ago, the channel hit 10,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough. It's just crazy how quickly this channel has grown. And I have tons of DIY videos coming in the future. I really would love Muggle Magic to be where people come to get their DIYs for Harry Potter. So share my videos, uh, share my channel with your friends. Again, I can't thank you guys enough for uh, the, just helping me grow this channel so quickly. So I put in a lot of hard work on this DIY. I've been saving the Monster Book of Monsters DIY for 10K kind of because I, I wanted this to be the big video that I posted after reaching 10K. Actually, another reason that I decided to make the Monster Book DIY video uh, after my 10k subscriber goal is because uh, to put it lightly it's been a bumpy road. There have been quite a few issues while I was trying to put this thing together and record it. First of all I lost a round of recordings so I kind of had to start over and then part of the way through this I ran out of clay so I had to go get some more and when I got home I realized that I'd gotten the wrong kind of clay. The clay that I got actually never hardens it's for like animators and stuff, so it was useless. I had to go and get more clay. And on top of all that, I got sick for about a week. So my voice may sound a little funny um, through part of this, but that's why. And this one is a big project. Uh, the video was actually 30 minutes long once I was done cutting and editing it. So I decided to cut this up into three parts just to make it a little easier to swallow. All the parts of this video will be linked in the description box below. And yes, I will be giving away the Monster Book of Monsters that I make in this DIY. And because this was such a big project, it took so much time and effort to make, I wanted the giveaway to be a little bit more than just a weekly giveaway to give a lot of people more chances to win this one. So this is going to be the 13K giveaway. And also I do have plenty of giveaway winners to announce, so I'm going to announce uh, some at the end of each one of this three-part video. Go ahead and check out the description box below for a list of supplies as well as the free templates you can download and let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is make the teeth and the tongue. I just found these images on Google and printed them out just so I had some reference while I create this. So to make this we're going to be working with polymer clay. So first off let's just do the tongue because that's going to be the easy one. If you've ever uh, played with play-doh when you were a kid uh, this is <laughs> pretty much the same thing. You're just we're just going to shape this into the tongue shape. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight lines. It's probably better if it's not perfectly straight uh, edges and stuff because it's supposed to look, you know, organic and real and nothing in nature is going to be perfectly straight lines. I'm just going to use a butter knife and I'm going to use a pen cap for like more detailed stuff. So the butter knife we'll just use to, you know, cut a fork in the tongue like this you got to look at the details here it's kind of like they're not pointy they're sort of it's a, like a rounded thing so we're just going to you know round it out make it similar to what we see in the picture we can see that there is an indent down the center of the tongue so we can take the pen cap and just sort of run it along the center like this i think that's that's going to be good for the tongue well, let's set this aside and start on the teeth so for the teeth, if we count these out in the picture, it looks like there is about 17 teeth. Just get a little ball of clay like this and then, you know, just shape it into the shape of these teeth that we're looking at. Something like that is, you know, perfect. That'll work. Just make 17 of these little teeth. And as we make these, the size can kind of vary. They don't all have to be exactly the same. It's probably better if they're not because as you can see, some are smaller and some are bigger in the picture. Now I've finished my 17 teeth. So the next thing I need to do is make the gums. Basically, I'm just going to uh, stretch this piece of clay out a little bit. And then there are eight teeth on the top row. So I need eight little spots to put these teeth. I'm just gonna kind of like pinch the clay to make little places to put teeth. So as you can see, we can kind of put our teeth in those little uh, slots here. The bottom side of this, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, but the top we want to make sure it looks pretty good. Now that all of our teeth have been kind of placed, just take your pen cap 
and add some of the details you see in the picture. Like as you can see in between each teeth, there's kind of like a line that goes up. So let's just put those in. We can kind of indent right above the teeth a little bit more. And use your fingers to kind of, you know, smooth out some of those lines and make it look a bit more natural rather than just, you know, cut lines in there. So I think uh, this is how mine's going to look. I may smooth out some of the teeth real quick before I bake it, but I think this is just how it's gonna look for now. The only th other thing we need to do is get out the book that you're going to be using. I'm just gonna be using this old dictionary and transforming it into the monster book and make sure that the size looks right. So after we bake it, we're going to be uh, attaching it to the book. So make sure that there's kind of like a flat part here that uh, we can attach to the book and then it sort of comes out like the teeth right here and it needs to be slightly curved and i'll show you how to get this effect when we bake it now we need the bottom part of the gums and we'll attach the remaining teeth to that bottom part of the gums here is my bottom row of teeth and again we're just going to kind of you know line it up on the book that we're going to be transforming into the monster book and make sure that it's about the right uh, shape and size that's about what these teeth are going to look like on the book so I'd, I'd like this to stay in about that shape okay so I've taken a piece of aluminum foil and just folded it over on itself a few times to make it a little bit more sturdy and then get this to the shape that it needs to be like this on the aluminum foil and we'll do that with both sides so if I take this and put it in the oven and just set it down like that they're going to, uh, you know, maintain that shape that they need to be while they bake. We're going to do the same thing with the tongue. So I'm just going to, you know, put it in the book about where I think it would be kind of sticking out. And there's not too much of a curve to this, but let's just shape another piece of foil that has a very slight curve to set this on top of. And that should be good. So now we've got this ready. We're going to go ahead and bake this for 15 minutes and then check it to make sure that it's completely dry if it's not bake it for another five minutes and check it again and just do that until it's done so i've these have come out of the oven unfortunately one of the teeth came off when i was checking it so i'm just going to glue this back on with a hot glue gun so the first coat of paint i did on these was just this old paint i had lying around and it just flaked off after it dried I got some acrylic paint to use. I got this uh, crimson color. Um, I also have uh, pink. Well, it's actually Persian red, but it's pink. And then I also have some milky white, some yellow. So hopefully between all these colors, I can match what we see in the picture here. So I've just taken some of the crimson red and the pink, and I've mixed it here in the middle. And it's actually just about the right shade for the gums. Let's try and get it smooth. You don't have to worry about if you get some of the paint on the teeth because we're painting those as well. And the idea right now is just to coat this with a solid color and then we can go in afterwards and add some detail after it's dried. Now everything that needed to be kind of a pink shade is pink. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then I'm gonna paint the teeth on these and let them dry. And then I might add some detail to the tongue at that point. Now these have dried and the next thing I'm going to do is just paint the teeth the uh, off-white color that I have. I am using a smaller brush for this because I want to make sure that I don't get the white paint on the pink paint. And we do need to paint the other side as well. So the teeth and the gums are, and the tongue are all completely painted. I added in all the details that I wanted to here. So basically I just painted this pink color in and then I went over the top with this darker red and kind of uh, blended it. And I also added yellow to some of the teeth. Next thing we're going to do is add the matte varnish to these. And then we're also going to add the gloss varnish to the tongue. I'm going to try and spread it out as much as I can without uh, getting too much globbed up in one spot. Um, one thing that I should mention is you don't want to put the varnish on until the paint is completely dry. And then once we're done with this, we will let all of these dry, I'd say, for at least a few hours before um, handling them. As you can see in the images, there are tentacles all around the edge of the book. 
So what we're going to do is just kind of, you can, you don't have to be uh, like an artist to do this, but just kind of like draw how big these tentacles should be in comparison to your book. So it, they kind of get a little further apart and longer as they go around the side of the book. If we look at this picture, you can see that there are longer ones that come out uh, near the teeth. So I'm just going to make like four sets of this size of tentacles because there's going to be one on the bottom, one on the top, and then one on the bottom on this side and one on the top on this side. Now, as you can see, I have shaped some tentacles out of tin foil. So you're going to want to do this for all of your tentacles. And I've set the uh, mouth and tongue up on my book about where they would be just so that I can kind of like hold the tentacles on and see and make sure that they're not going to like, you know, touch the tongue or anything. Okay, now all of my tentacles have been made out of foil and I've just kind of uh, set them underneath and inside the top cover of the book just to see how they'll sit. Get some clay, some more clay, and we're going to coat all of these in clay. You just want to use a roller of some kind to flatten out your clay. And I just want to cut off a piece that is big enough to just wrap around this tentacle. Now we can take our tentacle and just wrap it. Just cut off the excess clay. And we can use that extra clay to cover the flat part of the uh, foil in the back. This is going to be one of the top ones, so I've got it kind of, you know, waving right here, and then it kind of comes downward a little bit right here. And that saves us a lot of clay having the foil on the inside like that. If you look at the photos, you can see the tentacles have little suction cups on the inside, or on the, on the bottom of them. So this one should have maybe two or three suction cups on the bottom here. So to make a suction cup, we're just going to make a little ball of clay about this big, and then we're going to stick that ball of clay where we want our suction cup to be. Now I'm going to use the uh, back end of a paintbrush, but you could use something thinner if you want like a toothpick or the tip of a pencil, and just kind of poke a little hole sort of in the suction cup. So there we go. We have two suction cups on our tentacle. So that's one down, several more to go. So basically you're just gonna want to do this to every single one of your tentacles. Okay, and that is it for part one. Check out part two linked in the description box below. You'll also find the link to enter the Monster Book giveaway in the description box as well. And now to announce the winner of the Wonder Witch products as well as the Harry Potter Valentine's Day card. And the winner is Isabel Du Bois. Congratulations, and I have sent you an email with instructions on how to claim your prize. And the first place winner of the 10K giveaway is Berend Ustenberg. Congratulations, and I have also sent you an email on how to choose your prize from the pot of prizes, which included the Marauder's Map, a 20-page readable quibbler, a Weasley's Wizard Weezes catalog with 10 pages, and a handmade wand from Ilchester Wand Shop. Remember, I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.